Well, welcome to Coffee with Vern, a time where we have intentional conversations about the gospel and we desire to talk about theological truth. Thanks for joining us. We hope you can learn and grow and be fed through this. Well, Booker Tove, welcome back. James. No, you welcome back. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, there it is. <laughs> People are going to think I'm dead, man. I sound like a smoker. Yeah. It's awful. And <coughs> I, if you hear me coughing, I'm sorry. I'm not contagious. I'm cleared. Even if you were, I'm so far away from you. I'm just glad to see your face and <laughs> see people again. So, yeah, we had a plan. It's not even 10 o'clock. For this episode. It's not going to happen the way we had planned. Because, Absolutely not. I mean, you've been gone up until today. This morning. Today is my first day. So, back. so this is just going to be a free-flowing episode. Just going with I it. have things if need be, but yeah. I'm sure we won't be hurting for things. Originally, to talk about. we were going to talk about like living out purpose. Yeah, kind of like the, the and we can tie in a little bit sequel of that to, the to end last week because I talked about that this morning with the, the last Evans week. Middle Bible Club. Yeah. That's kind of what we broke down. But yeah, if you didn't know, I've been locked up. I've had the virus, and that's why I'm barking like a dog. Um, and I'm just let me just put this out there because mm. your wife suffered with it too. My mom suffered with it. My yeah. sister suffered with it. This thing has no grace. Yeah, it picks whoever it wants. I mean, I was in the best health that I have been in in over a year because we've been working out, doing CrossFit. Yeah. I mean, I felt great last Wednesday, juiced from the workouts that we were doing. And all I know is Sunday when I got up and I got to go in the shower, I about passed out over the toilet. And that's when I was like, all right, sick. Bro, when it hurts to lay your head on a memory foam pillow that has cooling gel in it, that's rough. I couldn't even rub my hand through my hair. Yeah. I mean, it was awful. I have never been so sick in my life. So let me let me ask you. Yeah. This is this is out of love. I want you to know. Yeah. <laughs> if we hearken back. Hearken back. What's that mean? If we look backwards, ah, recall. Yeah. Recall. Um, when you were quarantined. Oh, my goodness. You're talking about when my mom had it in February. Yep. And January. when uh, when you, you said. It was awful. And you said, man. You know, you need to feel bad for those of us who are quarantined just as much as those who actually have the virus. Would you would you like to amend that statement? Yeah, let me <laughs> I would like to add <laughs> an amendment to the board. I'd like to make a motion. Yeah. Um this is ten times worse. <laughs> but uh I mean, am I okay, like mentally Okay, let's compare it to so yeah. Let's mentally. I would like to have that was horrible yep. being locked up by yourself and you're not sick. Yeah, because you can't leave, you can't do nothing. But you know, physically, this was excruciating. So it's on two different levels. Like mentally, I was I was so tired and beaten up physically. My mind didn't have any room to think. Really, Thursday was so. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I was locked down. Yeah. I had assignments due for my class Tuesday night. I had the email professor and was like, yo, bro, we can't do this. Like, we're going to have to wait till Wednesday. Wednesday was the first day I really got up. I went walk neighborhood Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Like, I, I started moving Wednesday. <coughs> I couldn't move much. Um, and so, like, because I was so sick, I couldn't even think. Whereas the opposite, back in whatever it was, January, when my mom was sick, all I did was think. Yeah. So like I, I was really hoping when I found out I was sick, there was a part of me that went, well, I really hope I can get ahead when I, you know, I, I got a little bit of relief on Monday morning. I mean, Monday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I really hope I can get ahead on some stuff. And I, I mom came and got all my books and stuff like that. Nah, mm. what it, bro? I, I couldn't even get anything done. Um, not until yesterday I started making some head weight and getting work done. I mean, I got my school work done and I did well last week, but it was by the skin of my teeth. Yeah. And I was just, yeah, it's, it's a whole different kind of deal. Different levels. But now I, my whining back in January, <laughs> bro, I'm not, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't really cry about a lot of things. Yeah. And I don't complain about pain. I really don't. I'll grimace, be like, oh, I'm getting old. But I don't really complain about pain. Mm -hmm. I, I have a pretty high pain tolerance. No. I did I wept on Sunday. Sunday night, I cannot I went thirty minutes of sleep was the most I had got within uh ten o'clock to six in the morning. And I wept just out of pain. I have yeah. never hurt so bad in my life. So 
to all those out there that have not suffered uh, with it, praise God. And if you have struggled, I feel you. Man, this thing has no grace. It has no friends. So all I would say is to the audience, man, do what you got to do. Like, be careful, be safe, because this was the most miserable 10 days of my life. Yeah. I, I would, I would, I'm pleading to God to never have to do that again. Like, I'm not even kidding. That was miserable. So all that to say, I'm just thankful to be alive. Yeah. Um, that is God's grace. Yes. And I uh, do not take that for granted. Absolutely. Um, and so, and to all those that are battling, man, praying for you because, man, <laughs> Oh man, it was awful. And so just, uh, and then I, I do want to say thank you to everybody to the church family for reaching out and everybody that has prayed for me. Um, the prayers have been felt. I would say the Lord has been very gracious in that. So, but it's good to be back. I've missed my best friend. Um, I don't do well not <laughs> you seeing have been you. Missed. Uh, you know, when I go more than a day without seeing you, I panic. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, and it's it's just been weird. Um, yeah, I agree. It has been weird. And so, yeah, no, it's good to be back. Um, it's good to be back on air. It's good to just get back in the groove. Um, my girlfriend's got it too. You know, she she's out of her quarantine. I think tomorrow or Thursday. She picked it up from me, probably, no doubt. Probably, yeah. I was and about to say. say. Thanks to her buying me the shirt. It says God didn't save me from my culture. God saved me for my culture. Jackie mm-hmm. Hill Perry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a bop. I like it. Um. And so I wore, wearing it for her today, but, um, yeah, let's, let's get into this thing, yeah. shall we? So it's been an interesting week and a half, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I started a couple of new books. Um, I didn't do well when yeah. I found out I had the virus. Uh, so my cousin, I'm going to try to make this where you can follow my cousin's husband. Got it. His brother was my doctor that I went and saw. Okay. He walked in there. He said, James, why are you in here? I said, dude, I can't. I'm hurting all over you. Tell me what's going on. Sunday, so not this Sunday, last Sunday, I had 102 fever, and I was sitting in the doctor's office, and he came in and told me I had the virus. I was like, awesome. Sick. Um, Literally. I was pretty angry and mm-hmm. and just sad. Did, did part of you, though, say, I can just sit and read? No. Oh, seriously? Not an ounce of me. <laughs> uh, I'm not very good with... So, I'm, me and you are different in the two ways. I hate to be slowed down. Oh, uh, yeah. I like to make time to read. I don't like to be given time to read. No, I'm with you there. And so, um, I was angry. Now, I waited in the doctor's office for two and a half hours at prompt care. And um, then Anna Anna took me and then she took me back to my house before she left to go to Greenville. And I just, I, as we walked out, I wept because I was just so worried about everybody else. Yeah. Right. Um, I was worried about my football team. I was worried about y'all. I was worried about her. Well, then um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start a new book. So I started this new book on anger. So <laughs> it's a Christian book on anger. I can't remember the name of it because I stopped reading it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we just throw that out there. I, I stopped reading, reading it. it. I stopped reading it. Um, I started it on Tuesday. And I gave up. I was like, I'm done. Yeah. Um, read three chapters of it. It was, it was good. There were some good insights, but it was one of those things where I was like, all right, I've heard all this. I'm done. Um, well, I'll pick it back up. Maybe. Um, I bought it on Kindle. I hate reading on an iPad, by the way. Me too. Can't do it. It was awful, but, uh, it was a good book. Started reading that. And then I was like, you know what? I do want to try to get into this reading since I have this downtime in the basement. Um, <laughs> I was back down there except nice. this time I had the virus. <laughs> that was fun. Um, oh, man. yeah. And so my mom got me this new book, uh, for ordination called rejoice and tremble. And I don't have to cover on it cause I don't like to mess up the book sleeves, but this is like the second book, um, within the union series. So that's what I think it's called. Doesn't have an introduction. They have a preface talking about it. But the Union series is the one that Gentle and Lowly's in. Mm. So you got Gentle and Lowly, Rejoice and Tremble, and then the new book that's coming out in September called Deeper. Mm-hmm. And it's written by Dane Ortland, and yes. I'm excited about it. Yes. Well, this one's all about the fear of God. All right. So I was like, whoa. Yeah, we're going to start that. Phenomenal book. Um, something I've been stewing over because I've had the time. Uh, since Friday, <laughs> I've been just <laughs> stewing. Um, since Friday, I just kind of sat and thought is man doesn't fear God no. at all, like at all. Now this virus put the fear of fear in me of like, yo, <laughs> <woo>. yeah, 
uh, you're not invincible. Uh, because I'm not going to lie, last week I was going, or two weeks ago I was cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, had the football game, CrossFit four days a week, um, Bible study at Evans High School. We were cooking. I mean, I was grazing, baby. Mm-hmm. And then it all came to a screeching halt. <coughs> well, fear, I mean, was real when this thing hit. And so I started this book because I was like, you know what? I, I need to read that. I need to I need to understand what it looks like to fear the Lord. And so I started this book. Great book. Um, and I also just started because everything that's going on around us, between the virus, what's going on in Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, have you been keeping up with any of that? Just here and there. I've been trying to keep up with the Christian side of it, like our, our missionaries yeah. and our pastors. Yeah. And it's just excruciating. Yeah. You know, um, I mostly read whatever the voice of the martyrs. Yeah. And that is the painstaking stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw something yesterday and like I'm off of social media for right now. I just can't deal with it anymore. Um, But I saw something a couple days ago talking about how the Afghanistan church is growing. The underground church is growing. And so it just reminded me of what we talked about, how when... The church is put under pressure, it bursts. It yeah. Now, this is a spiritual growth. This is not just like a physical numerical. It is yeah. physical in the sense like the spirit is working. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this is true. I would argue these are true regenerate believers, you know, because they're sacrificing their life for the sake of gathering. And is it really sacrifice? So we need to even change our terminology there. They are willing to give their physical life for the sake of growing spiritually. Have you? I'm sure you have. I know you have, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Yeah. The John Piper little sermonette speech about the seashells. Don't waste your life. I think so. I, 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 a long time ago. I, you need to watch it. it it's uh, Is it on YouTube. Oh, yeah. And he talks about these two women that he knows that went to his church. They were missionaries mm-hmm. and they died in the field pushing 80. Oh, and he gosh. was like, that's not a tragedy. And he no. said, let me read you a tragedy. And mm-hmm. he opened up a retirement magazine. So and so retired early. They moved down to Florida. They like to ride their boat and collect shells. I have heard this. Yep. Yeah. So when he's That's like, a tragedy. In the last chapter of your life before you meet God, Was you're collecting, collecting shells. shells. He said, what are you going to do when you get there? Here, God, look at my seashells. My and then shells. he's like, you know, John Piper, don't waste your life. Yep. So. I he I I read an article where he talked about that in a different sense, talking about um, uh, retired pastors wanting to just spend the rest of their days playing golf. Yeah, and it was it's like wow, that's so rich and so true. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> like you know, this whole virus thing has slowed me down, um, which I'm not happy about at all. I'm just gonna be honest <laughs> with you. Like I have, me yeah. and the Lord have talked about this, and I. Clearly, I, but it is good to be alone. Jesus went to be yeah, alone. He I'm not talking early. about the alone part, though. I you just I'm, mean slowing down. I'm talking about I hate having to slow down, dude. When I'm in a groove, yeah. I'm in a groove. Yeah, and this thing slowed me down. And if if you have said this to me, this is not a cut at you. So take this with a grain of salt. All right, let me just put that out there. <laughs> I know it's coming. Now I have been told by a ton of people. Well, the virus is going to slow you down. You're going to have to take it easy. You're going to have to work your way back, stamina wise. I'm like, yes. Physically, yes. I agree. I'm like, I biked four miles yesterday and about passed out. Like, yes. I know. <laughs> I know I'm an idiot. I t- I'm trying to get back to where I was, man. I don't even know what to say to that. I got on my bike and I just couldn't stop. Um, but I, I, yes, I get that physically, like, I'm not where I was. Yeah. I'm going to have to work my way back. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop. Yeah. Right. Like, because there, the reality is, and it goes all the way back to what we're talking about with purpose. It's like today is here and gone and tomorrow is not promised. Yeah. If that is truth, right. Let's argue. Let's say if that is truth, that tomorrow is not promised. And we believe it is because what it says in the word in James four, right. If that is truth and tomorrow is not promised, then let me exhaust myself for the sake of the gospel today. Yeah. Right. I I'm all for pacing yourself in ministry. I yeah. get that. But I don't tomorrow's not promised. Fifty years old ain't promised. Well, I mean, what is the the parable of the uh, of the talents, right? We talked about this before. Yeah. The reward that the first two get, the second reward, is more responsibility. Mm-hmm. Right? Let me read 
this quote is so good. Christ knows no idle life, not even in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, man. So, yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I mean, it's, but it's so true. It is. <clears throat> like today, um, people are going to be like, you're an idiot when I tell you what I have going on today. But I've been antsy to just get back. So yeah. just, you know, let me go. Well, <laughs> most of this stuff, I, I feel like it's, you're, you're fine, right? Yeah. Teaching and all that stuff. Um, not working that out. That totally makes sense thing. to me. Like, don't let anybody be like, no, you can't. Like, if you want to teach, I'm teach. Teach. I have been itching. You know. Um, but yes, don't don't go crazy. What is that? That is a spider dripping down. He's just chilling. Look at him, bro. I ain't dealing with you. He's just uh, we. Uh-uh. He wants to be on the show. No, he he's coming down. You dead. You dead. Oh man. He's still alive. <laughs> His will to live is strong. <laughs> Pause for. <laughs> Sorry. Don't don't let my girls know you did that. I. They love. Listen. Every I've, creature except for roaches are mommies and daddies, and we have to save them all. Nah. All right. <laughs> anyway, so back to the discussion. Back to it. That drooped down. Um, add. Yeah, for me. But, you know that's. That's kind of where, you know, I'm at with this whole thing um, of ministry. Like, I've hit this yeah. crossroads. Um, and this is, I think this is a crossroads we all have to face as ministers. Because, I'm going to be honest with you, um, I am disturbed. I think that's the only word I can use. It's like, I am disturbed by American Christianity more now than I ever have been. Yeah. Um, because I... We've talked about it. I, I'm not a news guy. I don't watch the news. But lately, like we just said a minute ago, I've been trying to keep up because we have a lot of Afghan brothers and sisters that are just dying. And, you know, my dad was sharing with us yesterday, like today is the official like day the Taliban is officially in charge. Yeah. And like you have to weep. And if your heart doesn't break, then are, <laughs> do you have a heart? Because have you even heard of what, What's going to happen? Because I, I asked, I was like, so what does that, what does that mean? Mm. Here's what, it, here's the phases. So Sharia law will be put back. Right. right. What that means is women have no rights. And what it also means is the young girls become sex slaves. And that should break every fiber of who we are. And it doesn't matter if they are Muslim or if they are not. It doesn't matter what their walk of life is. That should break the heart of men. Because those are people in the image of God. Mm. And that and that's kind of where I'm at with it with this crossroads is because we have um I don't even know how to put it, but it's almost like we are so mad at the political situation that we're blinding our eye to the reality of people that are in the image of God. And I'm gonna be honest with you, my heart breaks for those that are also in charge of the Taliban. Yeah, as because they, they don't know because they God. don't exactly. And I just God has really burdened me over this reality of lost people. Yeah, but you you should pray for their salvation just as fervently for the Taliban as you do yeah. for those under their rule. <clears throat> I would argue as hard as that sounds and it, and is. Yeah, and I can see where this would get me some emails. <laughs> But I would argue that the wrong prayer to be praying is, Lord, destroy the Taliban. Yeah. I would say the prayer to be praying, like, destroy the organization, yes. That, like, as far as the infrastructure, like, the laws of what the Taliban is, yes, absolutely. It's paganistic, heretical, ungodly, unmoral. Yeah. Destroy that. Destroy Sharia law, all of it. But not the people. Because those are lives. Yeah. Like we need to be broken over salvation on all senses. So that's one thing in the book I'm reading. <laughs> so over the summer, I finished The Attributes of God by A.W. Pink. Oh, man. I finished Gentle and Lowly. This man read all always summer. Always a banger. And then I'm halfway through this one, which somebody, thank you so much, whoever got me these books. I have no idea. Uh, you're killing me. I would just like to send them a thank just you. Just tell them thank you right now. They're a listener. Thank you so much. I deeply appreciate the books that you gave me, whoever you are. Um, but I'm reading from Every People and Nation, A Biblical Theology of Race. And it's from um, a series, The New Studies in Biblical Theology, edited by D.A. Carson. 
and it is blowing my mind. It's just not something I have really given a lot of thought to. Like, you know, what the different races, quote unquote. I, I'm not going to talk about all of this because it, it's like a mind grenade, this book, a lot of it. Oh, it is. 100%. So, yeah. So we could probably talk about that later. But one thing that stuck with me, and it's the best quote from the book, was why did God create one man? Because no one should say to one another, my father is better than yours. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Pair that with the fact that Adam has yeah. no nationality and an unidentifiable yep. race uh, up to like Noah. It, and even the Hebrew nation didn't exist until the 400 years that yeah, they no. got together in Egypt. And those weren't one group of people who are homogenous. Yep. Anyway, aside, we all are made in the image of God. Every single person. Yeah. If you hate someone, and this is hard. Like, this is this something is, that I... These are hard checks. Especially with the Taliban stuff. Yeah. Like, stuff I struggle with. If you hate someone like that, you're hating someone who was made in the image of God. Yeah. And, like, it is just so... Um, it's been put in our face so much lately um, between the the racism um in yes. all of the what's doing here in america yes so what's going on in afghanistan um it's just it's it's here it's reality you know and we don't like to face these things until they're right in front of us yeah you know we say oh we'll handle that when it gets there well it's in front of it's us in front of us. you know it's here and the the church has got to make a decision are we going to go with what the culture is pushing so that we are morally accepted and so that we are accepted and and just uh, ooey gooey loved by the world, or are we going to say, no, nah, mm-mm. Like, I'm going to be set apart. Yeah. Because um, it's that whole concept of that series I'm watching from Auburn Community of remnant. Like the, the people of God are a remnant for a reason. Yeah. They are a remnant to be set apart, distinct, to be a holy nation, a holy people. And a holy people means a set apart people. You cannot be holy and set apart if you look like this world. Yeah. They're oxymorons. Um, and so it just, uh, it, it's just been something I've thought about a lot since I've been at home. You know, I haven't done a lot of thinking while I've been at home because I, I mean, my brain, brain has yeah. just been out. Um, but I, I just, this Afghanistan stuff just really uh, breaks my heart. Um, not just for the Christians, but for the unbelievers. Um, like it just breaks my heart. And just studying this fear of God book, I'll talk a little bit about this for a minute, um, really kind of brought a lot of that to light too, because mm. there's two kinds of fears that uh, Michael Reeves defines. There's sinful fear, mm -hmm. and then there's right fear. And sinful fear is the fear of when you are in sin, you don't know the Lord and you truly are scared of him. Yeah. Like it's a fear you, if you're an unbeliever, you should have. There, a couple of uh, my studies ago, <coughs> there was an example of that. It was a man, he was a famous writer in the 30s and he lived on the Mediterranean Sea. He had a huge villa. He was a millionaire. He had servants and chefs and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. His nephew said he came in and saw his uncle staring at a Bible that mm -hmm. he had given him, and he was angry. He looked angry. And he said, you know, I've been reading this part. For what does it benefit a man if he gains the world but loses his soul? Yes. And he said, uh, that used to hang above my bed when I was a child. And he said, of course, it's a lot of bunk, but it makes me think. And he said in the days following, his uncle would fall into fits of shrieking terrors yelling, I'm not dead yet. Do not take me. I am not dead. I'm not ready to go. Sounds like Martin Luther. Yeah. So it's just like Martin Luther as he, it was a wrong kind of fear. And that's what he even talks about the Martin Luther had prior to really coming to know the Lord yeah. when he would scream in the dungeon or not dungeon, but in the monastery of right. like terror. Um, and that brings up a good point um, before I share a quote from this. Uh, Greg Wilson, um, Man, love that guy. He is over FCA here in Augusta. Shout uh, out. Man, he was telling me um, about what his son does. So I, his sons are my age, his twins. And um, I believe one of them works with like hospice and was just kind of sharing about how um, 
it's a like it's a calling of a job. It's a ministry field because and he was sharing how you the unbeliever that dies and then the believer that dies, like you can see so the difference. Different. So he, let me put this into perspective. If this doesn't make you uh, need to change your shorts, like this is insane. He said it, his son handles it well because that was my other question. It's like, how do you mentally carry yeah, that and seriously. spiritually carry that? Like the heaviness. I haven't it. had to deal with that yet. Like I've not watched somebody just step into the next life. Yeah. And I, I'm not ready for that day. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm just yeah. not. But he said uh, for the unbeliever, it's like in their eyes, terror just hits. Mm. Like this, this fear overtakes them and you can see it. But then he said for all the believers he's watched pass away in hospice, um, they've almost smiled as there was this realization of where they were going. Mm. Peace. And it just, it left me with chills. Um, because that is it, like, that's what we're, that's what we're dealing with. And I, I'm coming out gunslinging. I've been out, I've been locked up for 10 days. Okay. Like, you know, that's just what happens when you put James in a house for 10 days. Yeah. Um, like Christian, wake up. If you call yourself a Christian and this kind of stuff doesn't burden you, I would argue you're not. And, and call my bluff and email me. That's fine. But like, this is real. Yeah. Like what we're dealing with is life and death. And we are just walking around mad that somebody sat in our pew. Amen to that. Or Real life actually happened. <laughs> or like mad that the, the bulletin isn't being printed or mad that our favorite song didn't get saying. And if that's the reason you come to church, then why are you gathering? Yeah. Because I'm going to be honest with you. We can't move forward spiritually until we get this petty crap figured out. Yeah. And we well, are going to be hindered for our walks until we get that figured out. Was that because we think of ourselves too much? We think we, church is for us. We just talked about this before we hit record. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the mandates is to deny ourselves. Yes. We are to lose ourselves, right? And so I just, I told you this quote before, but it's it's been a quote that I've been hanging on to. To Jesus, losers are keepers. Man, that's so good. So fruitful. Yeah. I mean, um, let me give a shout out to, you know, I just, uh, so one of the students that's been coming, um, uh, he has brain surgery. Mm. And, you know, he was just telling me a story and how people just really uh, ragged on him and things like that. And I'm like, but guess what, brother? In the eyes of the Lord, you are called, you are chosen, you are his. Yeah. Right. And so like, it doesn't matter what this world says about you because yes, like you said, losers are keepers to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Man, I want to be with the losers. Yeah. I want to be with the outcasts. I'm telling you, that's the people I want to be with. Absolutely. Um, it's just, man, it, uh, I had 10 days to really think on some of this stuff because I was really just ripped out of everything because Friday I was with the football team. And then, boom, I was just ripped. And I just had a lot of time to kind of stew and think. And um, it just hit me, man. Like, I just know from my own life, <clears throat> like, I had a wake-up call yesterday when I was watching the sermon I was watching about, like, are you going to pursue Christ in whole or is it just going to be another thing? Because mm. that is just not the life I want to live. It, yeah, and... And since we we've talked about it before, um, the stuff that I've gone through, uh-huh. um, <coughs> it is all in or all out. There is no middle ground. There's no middle ground. There is if you think you're okay, just playing a little bit here, playing a little bit there. Like I can be a I can be a good Christian, but you know, put Jesus on the back burner for a little while here. You know, during the week, like. It is all in. The get out of hell nothing. free card is not a real thing. It's not a real thing. It's not a real thing. It's either you love Jesus or you hate Jesus. There's yeah. no in between. And as harsh as that sounds, that's reality. It is reality. Well, I mean, otherwise you wouldn't have verses like, Lord, Lord. <laughs> For we prophesied, we prophesied in your name. name. <laughs> Be gone. I never knew you. Like, that's terrifying. Yeah. I, and I've said that before. That should, like you said, that should scare the pants off of you. It should raise hairs all over you, man. Yes. Um, yeah, I just, uh, 
like Monday and a lot of this is coming to surface because I, I'm going to be honestly like Monday or Sunday night off. I'm, it's all blurred what night it was, but it was Sunday night or Monday night, man. Like I did not think I was going to make it through the night. Mm-hmm. Like I, and, and call my bluff. Oh, well, James, you weren't that sick. No, I did not think I was going to make it to the next day. And I, in, in my pain and agony, I cried out to the Lord and I just said, Lord, give me rest and relief. Mm. I mean, I was pleading just for some kind of rest, dude. Um, I have never been that sick. And yes, did it take a virus to kind of get some of this stuff stirred up? Yeah. And is that why God brought it to me? Maybe, maybe it was. Um, as angry as I was, I, I've got to take the good out of it. And I've got to go, Lord, you showed me some things. So thank you. Thank you for your grace that you showed me some things. Um, but I just, uh, and if it sounds like James is just ticked off at the world, he's not. He's not like, don't don't walk away from this episode going, well, man, who peed in his Cheerios this morning? Like, <laughs> no one. I didn't eat Cheerios. Is that, is right? that a phrase? Yeah, it is. I can't oh, taste anything or smell anything. So I didn't eat Cheerios. I'll tell you that much. But here's the reality. It's it's a it's a whole concept of God. You you brought me through this because it was Him, not me. You brought me through these ten days. You brought me through this virus. Let every moment now account. Let it matter for something for you, because it is just. Um, I'm just exhausted at um, watching so called believers claimed Christ followers, claimed Christians, uh, look nothing like Jesus. Yeah. And that just, uh, it hurts me. Um, and like I said, I work with a football team, you know, and that's a dark area. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to see dark, like that's a dark area. Um, there's all kinds of different walks and backgrounds coming and they don't want to hear from this guy that carries a Bible around. Some of them don't, but man, that's my mission field. Mm Mm-hmm. And I and if you're yeah. like, well, that's, I mean, you've very obviously and clearly been called to do this. Oh, there's no like I I I sleep thinking about these guys every night. Yeah, I'm thinking about what what kind of conversations can I have. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. If there's one thing I know about you right now in your ministry, it's that you are supposed to be there with that football team. Yeah, there's that's the, I'll tell you that's one area I'm not questioning. Yeah, that's, there, I'm questioning a lot of things. Uh, not about my job or nothing, but like I'm questioning a lot of areas of where is God directing and leading in the future. Yeah. And that ain't one of them. Like, yeah, I've, I've already told coach, like I want to be with you for years. Yeah. Um, but man, I'm, I'm burdened. Uh, and me and mom were talking about it. You know, I'm just, I'm burdened over salvation. Mm. I'm burdened over lost people. And if you are not burdened, I would ask you to pray the same thing I prayed in college when I wasn't. Cause I got really tired of hearing about evangelism in college. Cause that's all I heard about I would ask that you get on your knees and you plead, Lord, break me for lost people. Cause I did. And he did. And he broke me. <laughs> he <laughs> broke me. Um, and so, uh, man, it's good stuff though. Yeah. And it, it's hard to hear. It, it, it is hard to hear. Um, and yes, like sometimes we need to be spanked. Yeah. And so if you got spanked good, like I am going to apologize. I'm unapologetic about it these days. <laughs> like I got spanked. So you're going to get the aftermath of my spanking. But, um, man, we, we are not, you're playing with fire. If this is not reality to you, um, take that how you want, literal or figurative, but you're playing with fire. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to touch it because guess what fire does? It burns you. Yeah. Um, and why, why would we play with it when God has called us to, to walk in light? Mm -hmm. I don't know, man, but. Well, I can tell you, I can't taste this thing. It's supposed to be cookies and cream. I got no idea what it is. It's just a creamy shake. <laughs> I, I'm getting tired of not tasting anything. But, um, uh, man, I uh, again, I just want to say thank you to everybody that reached out, uh, prayed for us, and um, checked on me. I mean, there was some some long days and hours. Uh, I, I don't usually get sick, and that was what was crazy. I mean, I told myself, I'm invincible. I'm fine. <laughs> Right, (laughs) boom god was like no you're not virus um so but uh no i'd encourage everybody stay stay healthy man stay safe do what you gotta do to protect your family um be smart golly just be smart uh and keep pursuing but uh we is it next week we start our series we we're getting ready to unveil some stuff soon i do know that so exciting stuff is coming Mm -hmm. um and I'm excited about that. 
Hey, if you are part of Ecclesia and you listened to this before Ecclesia uh, tonight, we are meeting tonight, um, not uh, Monday this week, obviously, because it's Tuesday, but, and then we'll be back on track after that, but hope you can join us tonight and then we'll be back tomorrow to finish out our set the example last message. And so great stuff. It's good to be back. But until then, go drink some coffee and let me know how it tastes because I can't taste it. And I'll see you next week. Shabbat shalom. Go in peace.